Korean food to me is, is my childhood. It's my mom making sure that I never forget where I came from. Food is a vehicle for exploration. Everything that I cook is grounded in my Korean heritage and my origins as a chef. Being innovative is what we do. Being a chef is all about innovation. Right now, I'm uh, headed to the Genesis Kitchen at Tastemade and the Genesis GV80 to work on a few recipes. I'm Dookie Hong. I'm a chef. I'm Korean American. I'm ambitious. I'm innovative. And this is my origin story. Today we're gonna make kalbi, which is marinated beef short ribs. A very quintessential dish in Korean barbecue and brings you back to the origins of how I became a chef and kind of what made me who I am today. I feel like I'm known as the Korean barbecue kid. When you're going out to a Korean barbecue experience, it's some sort of celebration, a special occasion. There's never a time where you feel bad eating kalbi. It's always some sort of like joyful experience. I keep the bone on. It's actually one of my favorite parts in the barbecue. We're gonna score it. Kaibi, it's quite pricey, even in America. One of those like, let's celebrate something, let's treat ourselves type occasion and also dish. Beef is expensive in Korea because there's not a lot of land as you could imagine. So I do believe though, the best beef comes from Korea. It's called Hanu. Luxury means to me something that's well earned um, after hard work. For me, this meal is a very luxurious meal, but it's also very homey too. So next step, we're gonna make the marinade, which is definitely the most important part of this. I'm gonna grab apples and Asian pear, which are two really key ingredients. So we have Asian pear, which is one of my favorite fruits. The Korean Asian pear is the best. Uh, I'm not biased. It's just really, really, really delicious. Korean food, ingredients, uh, Korean cars, quality is definitely a key factor in, in all their design. When I was growing up with my mom, she refused to use certain ingredients uh, or even certain brands. It's like medicine, like you want to put good things in your body, so you're going to try to source the best. I came to America when I was one year old as a baby, moved to Alabama randomly, yes, probably the only Korean family at that time. I think that was the first time I ever had jambalaya, so being introduced to these like other flavors that weren't just Korean, I think really influenced me and a lot of my food I would say it's like the definition of Korean American. Koreans love spicy, sweet, you know, savory. Americans love spicy, sweet, savory. And there's this beautiful parallel that is in both American food and Korean food. There's a reason why I'm fluent in Korean right now. And the only reason is because my mom refused to speak English in the household or did not allow it. And she made it very clear from, from the early get-go that you could do whatever with your career or whatnot, but don't ever forget where you come from or your culture. So she was really adamant about it. So, you know, when you're young, it's annoying because you're like, hey, we're in America, learn English. And she's like, no, you know? And because of that kind of Korean mom stubbornness, uh, now I see like, man, I'm really benefiting from it, being bilingual. So understanding, appreciating, and embracing my culture wouldn't have happened without my mom. So she is a big part of the reason why I'm cooking Korean food now because a big part of culture is also the food. And then from here, you just add as you will. So one of the most important ingredients uh, is the soy sauce. So good quality soy sauce. Some sake, mirin, and water. So the ratios for soy to water is pretty much the base along with a lot of the fruit. So every Korean barbecue chef, you'll ask like, what is your ratio, right? Many people won't share their ratio. I will share the ratio, mine's six to one. So six parts water, one part soy is a pretty light base actually. The more water will help it not burn. Syrup or honey or anything, what this does is actually, it brings out that beautiful like sheen in a, barbecue meat, right? Sesame oil, just a little bit. The fruit sugar, it helps, and a lot of it's flavor-based, but I do aid it with a little bit of brown sugar. So great, we're ready to blend. All right. There it is, there it is. Great, so this is the color you're looking for, and it will get darker and darker as you let it sit. And you do want to submerge it. One thing that I do, how I finish it, maybe a little bit different than some other kind of traditional methods is finish it off with a little bit of salt, not too much, and some sesame seeds. From here, it's beautifully submerged in the marinade. 
cool, after you pour the marinade over, you want to store it in the fridge for a couple of days and you're ready for the grill. Becoming a chef was definitely unexpected. Uh, and I always say it's almost unknown to, I didn't know, I genuinely didn't know, and I know that sounds a little crazy, that this was a viable professional like career option. I didn't see a lot of people that look like me run kitchens or uh, represent their cuisine in any way. I did see a lot of doctors that look like me. I saw a lot of lawyers and business people that look like me. So for me, pushing the boundaries on all areas of my life and my career is something that is definitely a theme in my life for sure. We have some nice, beautiful uh, oyster mushrooms here, along with some chili peppers and some scallions. So the chili pepper, I like to split. The mushrooms are great in this shape. Just hold this pan lightly, nothing too crazy. You don't want to douse it in oil because it'll burn. And you want to keep it whole because it will shrink as it cooks. Mushrooms take a good amount of salt, so don't be shy. So we have this beautiful grill marks on the veg. So you don't want to cook it too much. So you still want that bite Hard scallions is probably one of my favorite accompaniments to any grilled dish. Cool, so we're gonna keep these grilled vegetables warm in the Amazon Smart Oven for about 15 minutes. Just enough time for us to grill our meat so everything is warm. So this was marinating for about two days. And you can tell that the marinade, because of the time, it really got through to the center. We're ready to grill the meat. We have a hot grill ready to go, and it's pretty simple from here. We're gonna grill it for about 15 minutes, maybe about eight minutes on each side, seven, eight minutes on each side. What you're looking for when you flip the meat is, I call it meat sweats. It's probably not called meat sweats, but you get this nice like meat juice that's uh, surfacing on top, and you'll see a little browning of the edges. That's a pretty good sign that you wanna flip the meat and you'll get this beautiful char on this meat. Food and culture go, I believe, go really hand in hand. Eating Korean food uh, all the time when I came home in school, it was American lunches. But when I came home for dinner, it was always Korean food and Korean flavors. And that always kinda kept me connected to the culture. Uh, and it was very easy to stay connected because you know, the language, the food, it always, reminded me that I was Korean. So the kaibi is done, it's resting. We're gonna get our grilled vegetables that have been staying warm in our smart oven. That's beautiful. And it will just cut and plate. Cut it off of the bone. Kaibi smell, Korean barbecue, anytime I have Korean barbecue, it's always good memories. It's always around some joyous occasion. And uh, like I said, because it's, for the most part, a special occasion dish or experience, just always good, joyous feelings. A very traditional, I would say, an accompaniment to Korean barbecue is red leaf lettuce for wrapping and some perilla leaves. We have that and have that available. So people can wrap and kind of make their own little wraps. Vegetables. Which not hold back on. I want to finish it off with some of these scallions. Some sesame seeds to finish. So this is kaibi, all plated up. It goes really well with aged kimchi, a traditional Korean meal. Yes, you could eat it just the meat, which is excellent. I love wrapping it. It just brings this, you know, it's, it kind of lightens up the meal. I take red leaf lattice, some perilla leaves, a good piece of meat, and all this beautiful grilled veg that we've already done. Some mushrooms, some scallions. This is samjang. This is a Korean meat condiment with Korean chili pepper paste, soybean paste, sesame oil, a lot of good stuff in there. And this is what every Korean barbecue restaurant will have as their meat condiment. Maybe a little bit of kimchi, just for that acidity. So wrap, take a bite. Mmm, that's really incredible. It's, you definitely get that smoke and char from the meat. 
but that acid of the kimchi and the perilla, which really, is really hard to miss perilla. And it's really refreshing. And that samjang brings it all together. Yeah, I would say definitely try this at home. This is incredible, really hard to mess up. Uh, and yeah, enjoy. Being innovative, being an innovator, dare I say, is, is what we do. And if you are privileged enough to express your creativity in many ways, I say own that. Be creative, go all out.